Hey guys, it's Anna from Bright Lane Gardens. We are currently right at the beginning of seed starting season here at the Native Plant Nursery. I am trying a new method this year of cold stratification and I'm super excited to talk about it with you guys. So today's video is going to be short and sweet, but I just wanted to talk about a different method of stratification that could be ideal for you as you start some of your native seeds this year. So when it comes to the concept of cold stratification, I've always tried to follow the rule of mimic what mother nature has to offer. So I live in Northern Michigan and we have a lot of moisture here. We get a ton of rain during the fall season. We have a lot of snow during the winter season. This is literally what it looks like today. We have feet and feet of snow on the ground. And then of course in the spring, all of that snow melts and we get even more rain. So when it comes to cold stratifying our seeds here, I've always thought mimic what mother nature has to offer and mother nature has to offer a ton of moisture and a lot of cold temps. So we have always followed the cold moist stratification rules. If you have watched any of my other seed starting I videos, do and you've definitely seen moist my stratification cold process moist stratification using a process. refrigerator. I use just a Ziploc plastic baggie, a coffee filter or sand or vermiculite, some sort of nice fine medium that I can then moisten with water and stick in that Ziploc bag and put in the refrigerator. So knowing that the plants outside of this room here are going through this cold moist stratification period every single winter, I thought that was the best method for us. But then I heard about dry cold stratification. This was kind of new to me and at first I overlooked it thinking there's no way that's going to be a successful but then I was thinking you know there's a lot of native plants that grow here in northern Michigan that are also native to the Great Plains like North and South Dakota or they're native to the Rocky Mountains or they're native further south so there has to be some other methods of stratification that are still successful for these same species and dry cold stratification is absolutely one of those methods. So this concept of dry stratification follows the same basic methodology behind cold stratification, which is basically that a lot of these native seed varieties require this period of cold temperatures to essentially break the dormancy in the seed. This of course is a survival technique implemented by these plants to ensure that the seeds do not germinate until warmer spring temperatures occur, which of course is a higher likelihood that they'll actually become mature plants and not die off from a period of frost or an additional cold temperature there. Now with dry cold stratification, we're still putting the seed through that period of cold temperatures we're just not adding in any moisture. And if you think about it, let's go back to the Great Plains of South Dakota again, they get a lot of sub-zero temperatures. In fact, their temperatures are usually a lot colder than ours are here in Northern Michigan. Their temperatures are so cold, in fact, that there's less moisture available in the air, which of course leads to less precipitation. So on average, the Great Plains get less snow than we do here in Northern Michigan, even though we tend to see temperatures that are 20, even 30 degrees warmer than they're seeing there in the Great Plains. Now the Great Plains are still home to a huge variety of native prairie grasses and prairie flowers that are also home to here in Northern Michigan. So these seeds can actually be stratified in a couple different ways. They can be cold moist stratified like they are here in Northern Michigan, or they can be cold dry stratified like they are in the Great Plains. And in fact, there are even some varieties that don't need a cold stratification period at all, like coneflower, for example, is native much further south than Michigan, and it's native in some states that don't even get a true winter. So in areas like that, it doesn't ever undergo this cold stratification period. This is an experiment that we tried in a previous video where we did a batch of cold stratified versus non-cold stratified coneflowers, and both batches still germinated, although the cold stratified batch did germinate at a higher success rate than the non-stratified batch. So it's time for another experiment. Today I wanna to experiment with cold moist stratification versus dry cold stratification and see if there's any differences in those germination rates between the two methods. When it comes to cold dry stratification, you have to think about the variety of plant that you're growing. Not all varieties of native seeds can be stratified using this dry stratification process. 
you have to select varieties that are naturally drought tolerant or drought resistant. And you wanna go back to my example about the Great Plains and think about your prairie flowers and your prairie grasses. You'll definitely wanna research before you do any of these methods with your seeds, but I did put a short list of some of the more popular native plants, at least the popular ones that we grow in my region here, that can be stratified using this dry stratification process. So I selected a few varieties that are really hot sellers here at our plant nursery. And if these seedlings are successful, we will actually be selling these in the spring here. But let's try three different varieties. I chose these varieties based on their drought tolerance and based on the fact that when I did my research, these were common plants that were also native and popular in the Great Plains too. So hypothetically, they should be successfully germinating with this dry stratification process and I should be able to mimic it right here in my refrigerator as well. Compared to your cold moist stratification process, the process for dry stratification is really simple actually. And all I'm going to need today is a paper envelope. So you can use a container, you can use a plastic bag. They do recommend using something quote breathable. So for me, I love these brown paper envelopes. I will link them in the description below. This is typically what I use for all of my seed collection actually. These have a really good breathability rating. And what that means is your seeds can successfully dry out over the winter season. They will be nice and ready for you when you go ahead and plant in the spring or in this case, plant in the middle of January which is so fun. Today we are experimenting with two varieties of prairie grasses, which is going to be June grass and little blue stem grass, which is such a hot seller for so many reasons. Little blue stem grass is probably one of the top plants that we sell here at Bright Lane Gardens. And then of course a fan favorite on the prairie flower side is going to be purple cone flower. Now, all of these plants are very drought tolerant once established. So these are definitely those plants that we recommend. If you have a large area that's full sun and does not have irrigation, these are some classic recommendations that we would say these will thrive in that area. You don't have to water these every single day and they will survive just fine with those full sun conditions. If you've watched my videos before, then you already know what my very first step is going to be. I cannot emphasize this enough, label your seeds. They look very similar when you put them in the bag. They look even more similar once they germinate. So it's always helpful to label what you're growing so that you know how to take care of it. I'm gonna write directly on these brown envelopes here. And what I want to include is of course the name of the plant but I also want to include the date that I am dry stratifying. And I am gonna put a note on there that I am dry stratifying these since I do also have moist stratified seeds in my refrigerator at the same time. The last thing I wanna add on my envelopes is how long I intend to dry stratify these seeds for. I am going to dry stratify for slightly longer than I would typically moist stratify. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I'll explain them after we put the seeds in the envelope. But specifically, I'm going to add about 25% onto the overall time. So a lot of times for my grasses, I'm usually cold stratifying for about 30 days. So I'm going to probably dry stratify for 45 days. And then my cone flower actually only needs to be cold stratified for usually about 10 to 15 days. So I might increase that just to 30 days so I can make sure that the dry stratification process actually broke the dormancy of that seed. I have my packets labeled. My next step is to go ahead and put my seeds inside. I'm not gonna take the time to count them out today, but I'm definitely not going to do this with 100% of my seeds because I want to split these up and do the other set as a cold moist stratification process so we can compare in about a month or two and see who had a higher success rate. These are what June grass seeds look like in case you have never seen them before. So we're just gonna take those, keep them nice and dry. They already feel nice and light and airy. So we wanna make sure that those stay nice and dry and we're gonna stick them right in this envelope. I'm gonna go right ahead and seal these up just to make sure that none of them fall out and my June grass is ready to go. Next up is going to be my little blue stem grass. These look a little bit different. They definitely have those little white tassels on them that would get caught by the wind and picked up to the other side of the prairie out in nature. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those put in their envelope. And again, I wanna seal that right away to make sure we can keep everything inside. Little blue stems ready to go. 
And last but certainly not least is going to be our purple coneflower. So these are the purple coneflower seeds if you haven't seen them before. These seeds are what is a part of that spiky center part in the middle of all of the purple petals on the plant. These are really, really easy to harvest on your own. I do have a video on that as well if you're interested in harvesting your own purple coneflower seeds this year. I'm doing quite a few of these because we actually have mass quantities of these purple coneflower seeds. Again, this is probably one of our top selling plants here at the plant nursery and it has been for ever since we opened our doors back in 2020. And our purple coneflower is ready to go. So I have my seed packets here. They are filled and sealed and totally ready to go. My very last step is to put them in the refrigerator. Now I have a couple tips for cold stratifying in a refrigerator. Anytime you are putting seeds in a refrigerator, try to put them in an area where they are less likely to be disturbed. We can't all have dedicated seed stratifying refrigerators, but we can have dedicated shelves or areas that we keep our seeds that are less likely to be disturbed. The envelopes that I'm using today, the ones that I have in the description below, these are nice opaque envelopes. They do not let a lot of light through. So these are fantastic, but it is still nice to keep your seeds away from the light as much as possible. You can do this by taping a piece of paper over top of a glass shelf, or placing a box of something over top of where the light might access your seeds just to eliminate some of that direct light exposure. Sometimes direct light can cause your seeds to prematurely germinate. I have my seeds safely in their new home in the refrigerator where they will stay for the next 30 to 45 days. I'm so excited to see how these turn out. This seems to be a tried and true method for a lot of people. And of course, mother nature is doing it too. So I suspect that this will be wildly successful. I am very curious to see if it is more successful than a moist cold stratification process. So the results on that experiment won't be available for a couple months yet, but make sure that you subscribe to our channel and get your alerts set up so that you do know when that video drops. So a couple things I wanted to mention that I said when I was loading the seeds up. This is a really nice process to use because of the length of time that you're actually able to stratify your seeds. In concept, this should present a lower risk of some of the issues that we will experience occasionally with our cold moist stratification. So whenever I'm teaching you guys about cold moist stratification, I'm always telling you that we have to go into the refrigerator and check every 15 or 20 days and we're looking for two things. And those two things are premature germination, which would be if one of your seeds started to sprout in the refrigerator, which in that case, it would force you to take the entire packet out and you would have to go ahead and plant them up as is, because of course your seeds only get one chance to germinate. So once they've germinated, you have to make sure you're putting them in an environment that will enable them to grow. And the second thing that we're always looking for is signs of any mold or mildew growth, which can occasionally happen in the refrigerator. I've definitely had seeds mold on me before. And unfortunately, since mold is contagious and spreads to other seeds around it, in some circumstances, it can eliminate your entire batch of cold stratified seeds, which is so disappointing, especially when you've been waiting months to be able to plant those seeds in the ground. Since dry stratification takes that moisture right out of the equation, in concept, this should mostly eliminate those two issues. So premature germination and mold or mildew growth, the risk of those should be significantly lower with this dry stratification process. So that's something I'm really looking forward to is just popping these in the fridge and not looking at them for 45 days. So it's really hands off. I love that concept. Let's see how successful it is. That's all I have to show you for my video today, but I can say that I am so excited to show you the results of this experiment. So again, make sure that you're subscribing so that you know when the results of video does land. I do want to mention, I did a similar experiment with a cone flower before where I actually did a cold moist stratified batch versus a non stratified batch. That was super fun. People seem to be really into it. So if you're curious about those videos, I've added them to the description below so that you have easy access to those as well. I love to talk about all things native plants and starting native plants from seed is one of the easiest ways to make native plants accessible to everyone so that we can start adding them back into our local ecosystems. If you have any suggestions, tips, tricks, or methods that you like to use for starting your own native seeds, please share them with us. Leave them in the comment section below. And if it's something that enough people are interested in, I would love to do a video on it as well. That's all I've got for you today, but we of course have a lot more seed starting videos coming up. 
including your favorite wild lupine. So stay tuned. That one should launch sometime next week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to spend on our channel today. It seriously helps out small businesses like ours so much. I sure hope to catch you next time. Bye-bye.